Hello, my dear fellow evangelists. Blessings to you all, all the way from Orlando, Florida. This is Evangelist Alejandro Arias, and I wish it could have come to the Proclamation Evangelism Conference in Nairobi, Kenya. Unfortunately, given the circumstances of COVID and this pandemic and the new variant, I wasn't able to come, but I wanted to extend my greetings and say hello to all of those who are there live in Nairobi and those who are watching us online. I'm sure there is a couple of thousand evangelists who are ready to win the lost. And those who are watching online, I wanna bless you. I wanna send uh, my prayers and, and just uh, extend my uh, greetings and also commend you on the work you are already doing to advance the kingdom of God, to advance the gospel here on earth and i pray that the lord will continue blessing your ministry and empowering your ministry so that together we can fulfill the great commission today i want to talk about five areas of proclamation evangelism that i think are very important and we need to highlight them we need to talk about them we need to talk about the need of um, you know raising awareness about some of these areas and i want to start with generational evangelism. I'm deeply concerned about the lack of young evangelists in many churches. In fact, if you travel around and you go to different churches, you will not find one evangelist connected to a church in many occasions. You will not find an evangelist in a local church. And it's sad. Evangelists are you know, a great blessing to the body of Christ. And I'm not talking about the evangelists in office. I'm talking about the gift of evangelism. And, and if you are able to discern and spot someone in your church who's got the gift of evangelism, you need to support them. You need to get behind them. You need to invest in them because evangelists are hard to find nowadays. They're hard to come across. And so we need more recruiting, we need more evangelists, we need more young evangelists. You know, we have a lot of evangelists that have been doing this. We have a lot of seasoned evangelists that were trained, you know, back in the days and they're still traveling, they're still going around. And I'm sure I'm probably addressing a lot of those seasoned evangelists. And so I wanna tell you as, as a seasoned evangelist, from a seasoned evangelist to another evangelist, it is time to raise more Elishas. It is time to raise a new generation of evangelists. Please invest time, invest resources, invest prayer in raising more evangelists because this world needs a fresh word, a fresh generation that can connect with this generation. You know, the other day I heard about a TikTok evangelist and I couldn't believe it. I mean, this, this guy, He's only 18 years old and, uh, you know, teenager. Um, and uh, he had the idea to create a TikTok channel and preach to his friends. And, uh, you know, he had this creative idea of coming up with very short sermons on the gospel on Jesus. And he started preaching to his TikTok audience and his TikTok audience began to grow to the point that now he's got like, I don't know, like 30,000 uh, viewers connecting with him on TikTok. And uh, this guy is very successful. He's very good at what he's doing. And he's known right now around the world. He's known as the TikTok evangelist. And so God is giving us new ways, new tools to connect with this generation. And I'm talking about my generation. I'm also talking about Generation Z, I'm talking about Generation X, and I'm talking about other, other generations that we need to connect with. Evangelists are meant to be generational microphones. Now, I want you to pay attention to that, to what I just said. Evangelists are meant to be generational communicators. They're not just meant to connect with one generation and lead the other generations. I always compare the ministry of evangelism like an old-fashioned radio. You have to look for the right frequency and connect with the right people. You have to come down to that frequency in order to connect with the right generation. So whatever changes we need to make, whatever changes we need to implement in our ministry, 
to influence one generation or to connect with one generation, it is necessary that we make those changes. And I'm not talking about letting the world influence us. Obviously, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to how can we empower other evangelists who are millennials, who are teenagers, who are passionate, how can we connect with that generation and how can we raise more evangelists? I want to talk about generational evangelism. You know, Samuel was called by God, yet he didn't know how to hear his voice. He was never trained or mentored in the priestly service, even though he lived in the temple. Now think about that. He spent the majority of his time in the temple. He was consecrated by Hannah, his mother. His mother came to the temple, offered Samuel uh, you know, before the Lord, because Samuel was a miracle, as so many of you know the story, Hannah offered Samuel up to, for the service of the Lord. And so Samuel was living in the temple. He was staying in the temple 24-7. He was aware of all the temple duties and all the temple routines and all the stuff that was going on in the temple, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He knew everything about the temple service. And so what I find amazing is that Samuel, even though he lived in the temple, even though he was in the temple, he didn't know how to discern the voice of God. Yet he was living in the temple. He didn't have a relationship with God, with Adonai, with Elohim, with, you know, with our father, with, with the God of Israel. And so if you read your Bible in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 this is what it says now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli and the word of the Lord was rare in those days I want you to highlight that does that sound familiar to you does that sound familiar the word of the Lord was rare in those days there was no frequent vision Verse 2, at this time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow, dream, to grow dim so that he couldn't see, he was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of the Lord was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you call me. But he said, I do not call you. Go back, lay down. So he went and lay down. Now, I'm not going to read the whole scripture. But as you know, uh, Samuel kept going back to Eli. Did you call me? Here I am. And he said, no, I didn't call you. And so around the third time, Eli discerned, you know, he knew that God was trying to get Samuel's attention. And so Eli said, well, next time you go back and if you hear the same voice, uh, you know, address the Lord this way. Tell him, here I am, Lord, for your servant is listening. So if you read this, you would know that, you know, Samuel didn't know how to discern the voice of God. He hadn't had an encounter with God yet even though he was living in the temple. See, we have a lot of young people in our churches. We have a lot of millennials. We have a lot of teenagers that are going to church, that are attending church, yet they haven't had an encounter with Jesus. That's why we need generational evangelism. We need evangelists that can connect with millennials, with, uh, you know, with this TikTok generation. We need evangelists that can connect with Generation Z. We need evangelists that can connect with Generation X, with baby boomers. We need generational evangelism. We will not be able to win the world. And I'm saying this with great, um, you know, with a, a great understanding of what we are seeing right now. And, and I hope that you receive this word, but we will not be able to win the world unless we can become effective at crossing those generational gaps, unifying generations and bringing generations together. You know, that's the spirit of Elisha. You know, Elisha was able to, um, to connect with Elijah. You know, the spirit of Elijah bringing generations together, bridging the gap, and bringing two generations together. I believe that as you invest time, you mentor, you groom other evangelists, you're going to have a greater impact in your city, in your region, and in your nation. 
Now, I'm going to give you three keys uh, to raise evangelists, to, to train, to groom evangelists. And, 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 and I think these are very important and these are very essential, especially when it comes to relational evangelism. Many young people, they come to church and sit there. They probably have a calling. They have a gift and yet those giftings are not being utilized. Those giftings are not being used in the local church. So it is very important that we invest time. Number one, we need to invest time. Number two, we need to invest resources. And number three, we need to invest prayer. If we want to raise a new generation of evangelists, we need to invest time with them. You know, I, I had the opportunity to mentor uh, another guy. And this was a few years ago. I was living in Australia. And this guy was a worship leader at my local church. And I knew that he wasn't just a worship leader. I knew that God had called him to do wonderful things. I knew that he was called to be an evangelist. I knew that he, even though he was worship leading, that, that, that his gift uh, package, his makeup, his DNA was not just worship leading. There was something more powerful, more significant that he was meant to do in the kingdom. And I knew that he was meant to be an evangelist. And so I approached him and I said, Jono, you know, I remember his name, Jono. Well, that's kind of his nickname, not his name. But I said, Jono, would you, would you mind if I ask you, you know, and this is how I approached him. I remember having this conversation and I said, Jono, would you mind if I ask you, are you completely just settled doing the worship leading and coming to church and singing on Sunday? Is this what you see yourself doing for the rest of your life? And I remember, you know, asking this question and, 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 and his eyes lit up. You know, there was something about the question and he said, no, I believe God has given me a, a big calling. I believe I'm called to go to the nations. I believe I'm called to preach the gospel in Australia. I believe I'm called to evangelize my nation and my people. And so I said, Jono, I want you to join me. I want us to start working together. So as a, as a seasoned evangelist, I was able to give him some work to start training him, to start, you know, grooming him in the work of the ministry. And I actually employed him two days a week. I was able to, uh, you know, allocate some work, find some work for him. Since he was very creative, he was able to help me with my website. And, uh, you know, back then, you know, designing CD templates and, uh, and CD covers and DVD covers and things like that. So I was able to find some work for him to do. And he was working, you know, uh, at his house and I was working in my office and, uh, you know, uh, we were able to communicate and talk and invest time in prayer. And then I decided to take him on road trips with me, take him to crusades and camp meetings. And we were traveling together. And I remember Jono began to grow. He began to blossom. He began to develop his evangelistic calling. And you know, Jono, the, the amazing thing is Jono ended up uh, becoming a pastor. Uh, he ended up pastoring a local church, ended up traveling with his own ministry. He went to a lot of churches and God started using him in a powerful way. So I believe if you want to raise generational evangelism, if you want to raise more evangelists in your network, you need to invest time, you need to invest resources, and you need to invest prayer because these things will form a bond. Remember, my generation and I'm talking about millennials, and millennials are the ones between their 20s and 30s. You know, I'm talking about that age group between 20s and 30s. We are the Facebook generation. We are the YouTube generation. We are the generational that, that we are the generation that grew up in a context of a relational approach and relational, uh, you know, dealings and re relational everything in our world is relational. So that's the reason why Facebook became so successful because Facebook was a relational platform that connected people that probably didn't see each other for years, probably didn't connect with each other after graduating from college. 
or from school and now they have an opportunity to connect now they have an opportunity to form friendships now they have an opportunity to come together and do stuff so Facebook became a generational a relational platform where people were able to connect where people were able to you know uh, form deep and, and and meaningful friendships and so our generation my generation is a relational generation we're not impressed by titles we're not impressed by you know by uh, sound or lights or sound effects or you know a lot of churches became a very entertaining They're, they were trying to hook my generation they were trying to entertain my generation and they thought that by entertaining my generation they were winning my generation and the opposite happened you know, my generation, they became very disenchanted and, and they, they saw church as an entertaining place and a lot of young people dropped church altogether after leaving high school, after leaving college. They didn't want to have anything to do with church because they thought church was not genuine. They thought church was just an entertaining place. And, uh, and so th th there was no relational bond. And it's very important for you as a seasoned evangelist to connect with your uh, you know, with that evangelist that you are equipping with your, um, you know, with your mentory or your protege or, uh, you know, to connect with that evangelist in, in a relational way, not just in a work environment or not just out in the road, not just, you know, doing the work of ministry, but also in a relational way. What do I mean by that? By, you know, spending time with your students by spending time and investing time and praying for them and you know inviting them out for a meal and having fun and just connecting on a relational basis you know instagram and facebook they both have been very successful networks and they've been able to unite the world and these companies were started by millennials now check that out they were started by millennials so reaching the next generation is about changing the wine scheme, changing the perspective, changing the angle, changing how we do things, you know? Not changing the outside, not just putting more lights and sound effects and more, making it more youthy and more fun. It's not just about that. It's about the context. It's about the essence. It's about, you know, what it comes down to. It comes down to relational evangelism. And number two, I want to talk about technology evangelism. I believe if we want to have more proclamation in our day and age if we want to reach more people if we want to reach the world we need to use our technology we need to use uh, you know all the social media platforms and all the technological tools that we have available and all the technology avenues that we have available we need to use them you know billy graham back in his days he used technology you know billy graham was the first preacher here in the united states that started using the radio to start having, uh, you know, preaching episodes, not just church during, during Sunday morning, you know, broadcasting a message on Sunday morning, that was common. But no, no, he started using the radio as a way to preach the gospel to normal people, to unbelievers, to, you know, the world. And so he started using that technology that was available in his days, that technology that was obviously very new and people are really enjoying it. He started using radio to connect with his audience. So I want to invite you to use Facebook, social media, turn those uh, social media networks into hotspots of evangelism. You know, use the channels God has given you to win this world. I remember one time I was able to um, pray for someone. I was uh, I was actually here in my I was somewhere here in Florida, and I was praying. I was part of a prayer group, and we were chatting. And back then, you know. These are the days when Messenger was around. I don't know if you guys remember Messenger, but Messenger was a kind of a cool uh, social media tool. This is before Facebook, before MySpace, you know, Messenger. If you guys are in your 30s, you would probably remember uh, Messenger. And so I remember chatting with this young girl. Uh, we were praying for this young girl, and she asked me to pray for her eyesight. 
And you know, she was all on, on, on the other side of the world. She was in Australia and I was in Florida and, and I was talking to her and I was interacting with her and I began to, to pray using not just uh, text, but I started using some, uh, you know, emojis. And back then, you know, we didn't know what those uh, pictures, what those symbols meant. And so we were just using them, you know, it, for fun. And so I began to use the emojis and I began to text and I began to rapidly write and pray at the same time. And uh, I remember she got back to me just a few seconds later and she said wow something cool just happened I just took off my glasses and I'm able to see I'm able to read and I'm like well that's amazing Jesus healed her and she was on the other side of the world and yet Jesus touched her eyesight and she was able to recover her sight when we were praying over messenger isn't that amazing how god can touch people how god can use technology so that we become effective in what we do so that we can reach the world for jesus so i want to ask you to develop ways to reach the other generation you know whether it's by creating websites or blogs or using social media or just think outside the box and share your story share what god has done because uh, we need to become proclamation evangelists. And proclamation is all about spreading the good news. So number one, you know, uh, relational evangelism. Number two, technology evangelism. And number three, arts evangelism. And God can use any personality type. I believe this 100%. Whether you are choleric or sanguine, expressing the love of God can be manifested through multiple ways, you know? I know people that can evangelize through their writing, through poetry, through songs, through drawings. Your personality is going to fit your calling. Your calling is going to fit your destiny. I want you to just think about that for a moment. Your personality is going to fit your calling and your calling is going to fit your destiny. Go around the world and preach the gospel out of love. Don't suppress your creativity, but rather use it and become really good at it. You know, as you use your creativity, as you start using those creative gifts that God has given you, I believe God's going to give you more opportunities to influence a generation that I am not able to influence. See, I'm not in the artistic world. I'm not, you know, an artist. I'm not a painter. I'm not a drawer. I'm not into poetry, but I know that if you find this niche, if you find this avenue, God's going to use you as an evangelist and you'll be able to become a proclamation evangelist within your own field, within your own you know, arena. God's going to give you favor. God's going to give you opportunities and he's going to open the door for you to just uh, share the gospel. So don't be afraid to use your gifts, whether that's a creative gifting or whether that's more of a, you know, a relational gifting, whether that's more of a, you know, technology gifting, whatever it is, use it for the kingdom of God. And number four, I want to talk about supernatural evangelism. I believe so Supernatural evangelism is key to see more proclamation happening in our world. Don't be afraid to step out in faith. Don't be afraid to lay hands on people and pray and, and raise others as you do the work of the Lord, as you do the work of ministry. Don't be afraid to walk in the supernatural power of Jesus. Remember, Jesus was a great evangelist. He exemplified, you know, walking in the supernatural. He lived it. He walked in it. He was able to demonstrate it. And, and that's the reason he, he meant entered his disciples. He trained them. He spent time with them. If you want to learn how to mentor someone, look at the life of Jesus. Study his life carefully, and you will realize that Jesus was the best mentor. He spent three years with his disciples. He trained them. He showed them how to do it. He showed them the ropes, you know. He, he basically walked with them, and he also prayed for them, and at times he invited them to pray with him, and 
And uh, even though those times were unsuccessful because it was late in the evening and the disciples were probably worn out after walking with Jesus hundreds of miles. And we're talking about walking, uh, you know, not, not walking nice, on nice roads, not walking uh, on beautiful roads. I'm talking about walking on, uh, you know, really rocky, really, um, you know, basically very rough roads. And, and Jesus walked these rough roads every day. And, and yet he was able to pray and spend the whole night seeking the Lord, you know, and he was able to invest time with his disciples. And so he was able to train disciples that basically shook the world. I believe God wants us to raise proclamation evangelists that will shake the nations, that will fulfill the Great Commission, those that will finish the task and those that will run the race and they will finish the Great Commission. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what God is going to do in this hour. So I want to encourage you to become a relational evangelist, to become, you know, good at doing more with your giftings, with your anointings whether it's uh, through technology or arts or writing or whatever it is, use it for the glory of God and also step out in faith and uh, operate out of the supernatural strength and the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. You know, Acts chapter 2 verse 43 says that the fear of the Lord came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as as anyone had need, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. All supernatural conversations must lead to Christ. Supernatural evangelism is not a mystical theory or a replacement of something that the world is already offering is the real power of God. When you walk in the power of God and when you are uh, when you are bold and courageous and you step out and you preach the uncompromising truth of the gospel and you pray for people and you step out out of your comfort zone and you do what God is calling you to do, I'm telling you, you are going to become an amazing proclamation evangelist. And so I want to just leave these thoughts with you. Allow God to speak to you. Nurture your relationship with God. Spend time in worship, prayer, fasting, and reading the Bible. Allow God to guide you and guide your life. Allow God, as you spend time reading the scriptures and growing spiritually, you will discover your giftings and you will discover your strengths. And keep using those giftings so that you can become strong and you can use those muscles so that you can win the world for Jesus. So let's recap on what I just said. Generational evangelism, a very good concept in order to reach other generations and become a proclamation evangelist. Number two, re relational evangelism. You need to invest time with people, walk the journey, you know, you need to groom them and you need to mentor them and you need to be be around them so that you can raise great, you know, prodigies and you can raise great uh, proclamation evangelists. Number three, technology evangelism, use of the avenues and the, the tools God has given you to influence the world. Arts evangelism, uh, don't be afraid to use your creativity and your creative personality to reach the world. And that's number four. And number five, supernatural evangelism, believe in faith and use the the power of prayer to bring the lost to Jesus. It was a pleasure. It was wonderful to share these principles with you. And I hope that you receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, that you are blessed, inspired, and that you can continue running the race with greater strength and greater power so that together we can fulfill the Great Commission and finish the task. God bless you. We love you all. And thank you so much for joining us here at this conference, Proclamation Evangelism 2021. See you next year.